Why waste time in commute and spend a lot of money for neat UG coaching? Parents, do you want your kids to achieve top scores in NEAT? India's leading online NEAT coaching, 100% success. Meet UG. TeenEinstein.com At Teen Einstein, we focus on NEAT coaching from class 6 to class 12. We think you'll like it. Our teachers are mostly PhDs in physics, maths, chemistry, botany and zoology with lots of years of teaching experience for class 6 to class 12. Thousands of videos, quiz, MCQs. We provide a daily worksheet of 30 questions on each topic, math, physics, chemistry and biology for rigorous practice, concept understanding, evaluation, quizzes and thousands of videos. Limited offer, 40,000 per year. Book your class. T9Stein.com, contact 99402 49720. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about electric charges and fields. So in this video we are going to see all these topics. Introduction, electric charge, electroscopes, then we will talk about what are conductors and insulators and how to charge a body or an object by induction and we will see what are the basic properties of electric charges and then we will see Coulomb's law, then forces between multiple charges. So before going into the details of electrostatics, we'll just see what is electrostatics. So from the name itself, electrostatics represents electro and statics, right? So electro means something to do with electric charges and static means something at rest. So electrostatics is a study of objects or charges that are at rest and the forces they create and the fields they create between them. So what, what are the forces created by the charges that are at rest and all we'll be studying in the study of electrostatics. So what are, what are charges? We have basically seen lightning. So lightning is a discharge and we have also seen spark or a crackle when we take off our synthetic clothes or sweater in a dry weather and we have experienced a sensation of an electric shock while opening the door of a car sometimes so these are all the things that happen due to electric discharge so then if there is an electric discharge we need to know what are charges right so electrostatics is the study that deals with the study of forces fields and potentials arising from the static charges so the charges that are at rest basically so we will see what happens when we rub a glass rod with wool or silk and then we rub another glass rod and when they when we bring them together what happens they repel each other but if the wool or silk cloth which we use to rub on the glass rod if we bring them together they also repel each other but the glass rod and the wool cloth attracted each other so there are things that repel each other and there are things that repel each other and attracted each other also. So there are only two types of an entity called the electric charge. So we can also call them the polarity of the charge. One is positive and another one is negative. So like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. So this, uh, this is just illustrated here. There is a silk thread because it's an insulator and we have kept a glass rod here which is positively charged and when you bring another glass rod near to this they basically repel each other so this glass rod which is hanging here will move away from this the similarly if you have a plastic rod here which is negatively charged and bring another plastic rod this plastic rod will also move away from this because of repulsion but if you bring a glass rod and a plastic rod which is negatively charged they attract each other so the same thing is explained here when two negative charges are kept hanging then they repel each other and similarly two positive charges repel each other and one positive and one negative charge they attract each other. So how do we know that if an object is charged or not? So charging basically happens when you rub a glass rod with a silk or wool cloth. What happens is charges get transferred from one, one object to the other object so that we know that the uh, object is charged. But you can't see the charges. So how do you know that an object is charged or not? 
So to know the charged object, we have an apparatus called an electroscope. So it's a simple apparatus which is used to detect the charge on a body and it, it is called a gold leaf electroscope. So the design has something like this. There is a gold leaf. There are two gold leaves here. So it is basically one gold foil, a very light gold foil which is folded in this way and it is connected with a metallic or a conducting rod. It's a metal rod and there is a metal knob and this is insulated. This is rubber and it is kept inside a box, glass box. So how do you use this? electroscope this is the structure of the electroscope so basically if you are given an object and you want to know if that particular object is uh, charged electrically or not so what do we do is we bring this object in this case this is a glass rod we bring this object near to this metal rod metal knob and touch this and see what happens since this is metal the electricity just passes through this so the metal knob also becomes positively charged and it gives the charge to the rod and so the positive charges again go here to the gold leaf now this gold leaf have two foldings so both of them get positively charged so what happens when two uh, positively charged objects are nearby they try to repel each other so as soon as you touch this metal knob with the positively charged rod then the gold leaf shows a deflection it shows a uh, movement they go away from each other so by this you know that the rod which you kept here is charged what would happen if the char uh, if the rod you kept here is not charged then you won't find any reflection here any deflection here so then you will know that the rod is not charged but there is one disadvantage to this you can only know whether this is charged or not but there is no way to tell whether it is positively charged or negatively charged so to do, do that you need another object with known charge to compare with it and check but an electroscope is a simple apparatus a basic apparatus which will help you to know whether an object is charged or not okay so in the previous example we saw an electroscope and we saw that we used metal knobs and metal rods so why use metal why not rubber why not wood because we know that rubber does not conduct electricity wood does not conduct electricity so in the previous case when we put charges here we want the charges to travel and come to the gold leaf so we want the charges to move freely in a material so conductors are one such material where the charges can move freely so uh, a very good example is the copper wire and this is the reason why we are using copper wire in our home electrical connections because copper is a very good electrical conductor so when i say very good electrical conductor what do i mean when you put charges through the through this material the charges do not stay in one place they can freely move so when i say freely move um, they will just move from one place to another without much disturbance but there are other type of materials like wood plastic rubber glass and all so these materials they do not conduct electricity and that is the reason why we are using this why uh, copper wires coated by plastic to avoid um, avoid shock when we touch the wires so in a household electrical connections if you see all the wires are uh, mostly copper and they will be coated by plastic so this is the reason because plastic is an insulator and uh, copper is a conductor so substances which allow electricity to pass through them are called conductors the examples are metals like copper aluminium and uh, basically human bodies and animal bodies and earth is a very big conductor then substances which do not allow electricity to pass through them easily are called insulators so the examples are glass plastic nylon and wood charges transferred to an insulator stays at the same place while charges transferred to a conductor get distributed within the material immediately so again we will see the example of a glass rod uh, in one end if you rub it with a silk or wool cloth then it gets the positive charge but if this is an insulator like glass the positive charge stays at one end it does not get distributed throughout but if it is a metal rod like a conductor 
then what happens if you if you charge one side of the conductor then the charge gets distributed uniformly throughout the material mostly on the surface we'll see why that is on the surface later but this is what happens you can't keep the charge in one end of a conductor because it can easily move through the conductor so it gets distributed everywhere okay so far we have been talking about charging an object by touching it by with another object so when you touch uh, when you rub one object from other object then the charges get transferred from one object to another this is called charging by contact is this the only way to charge an object is there any other way we can do it yes there are ways where you don't have to even touch the object but you can make it electrically charged so we will see how to do that so this method is called charging by induction so charges can be transferred from one object to another without even touching it so this is called charging by induction so before that we already talked about like charges they repel each other and unlike charges they attract each other right so what happens when you bring a charged object near a neutral object do they attract or do they repel so the answer is a charged object always attracts the neutral object because the neutral object also has equal number of positive and negative charges so whatever may be the charge in the charged object if it is positive then it will attract the negative charges in the neutral object Sim similarly if the charged object is negative it will attract the positive charges in the neutral object so a charged objects obviously attract the neutral object so we are going to manipulate this technique use this um, to our advantage and see how we can charge an object by induction without even touching it so to do that we have two metal spheres here which are kept in uh, insulating stands so these two metal spheres are equal in shape equal material and uh, every dimension everything is uh, same so we are we have kept them touching each other now what we are doing is we are bringing another positively charged rod near the left sphere the sphere a so what happens since they are both touching each other the charges can easily move from one to another so all the negative charges since this is a neutral object okay this is not charged so when there is a neutral object and you are bringing a positive charge nearby all the negative charges are getting attracted towards the positive charge here so all the negative charges are coming to the left end that is a and all the positive charges are left behind here because then all the negative charges are moving here so this end has to be positive right so then there is a separation of charge that is happening but the important thing to note here is this glass rod is not touching it it is kept at a distance uh, but at a closer distance now what happens let's separate these two balls a and b while keeping the glass rod here so this glass rod keeps this negative charges in a because of the attraction and we are separating a and b so now what happens a gets all the negative charges b gets all the positive charges now what we do we'll remove this glass rod when we remove this glass rod what happens this positive char negative charges get attracted to this positive charges and it comes like this so now what happens a is now negatively charged b is now positively charged when we started a and b both are neutral metal balls but now they are charged so if you separate them even further then we have a perfectly charged negatively charged object and a perfectly negative uh, positively charged object b so this is called charging by induction in this method we did not touch the glass rod or we did not rub the object or anything we just induced the charges so how do we do this induction the neutral charges have both positive and negative charges so we just separate them first by bringing another charge here so after after separating then we are we are left with the charged object so this is a method where we charge by induction so there is another one where uh, we can just what if we just have one object not two metal balls how do we charge by induction now we have a similar metal ball insulated uh, here so that the charges do not escape to ground so now we have a metal ball now what we do we bring another negatively charged glass rod now what happens all the positive charges in the neutral metal ball comes to this end and all the negative charges goes to the other end 
so now what we can do is is there any way we can take this negative charges remove them from this metal ball we can do that so earth is a we already know that earth is a very good conductor so what we do is we connect a wire from this metal to the earth so this is the earth so when you connect a wire you make all the negative charges go to the earth so when all the negative charges escape here so you may ask why this positive charges are not not at also not going to the earth because this negative charges here are holding this positive charges in this place otherwise this would have also gone if it is positively charged if it is just a positively charged sphere the excess charges always flow through the earth so now the excess charges here is the negative charges so they go through the earth and so we we lost them now what happens now we are left with a uh, metal ball with full of positive charge and a glass rod now if we remove this glass rod then this uh, positive charges equally get distributed among the surface of the metal sphere so we started with the neutral metal sphere and we again utilized the fact that uh, any charged object will attract the ch opposite charges from a neutral object so by utilizing this we charged this metal a uh, spear and also we utilize the fact that earth is a uh, good conductor and also it will absorb all the excess charges so by utilizing that we sent all the excess charges to the earth and then we got a perfectly uh, charged metal sphere so okay so we have talked a lot about electric charges so what are these charges what are the basic properties they have so there are three basic properties one is additivity of charges so what do i mean by additivity if you have an object and you have more than two charges in the object can we add the charges like we add numbers yes so it's very simple if you have two positive charges you just add them if you have negative charges two negative charges you just add them just like how you add the number system like if you have two positive numbers you add them if you have two negative numbers you add them and then overall it will have negative sign but if you have mixed signs like plus and minus you just subtract them and put the sign of the bigger uh number right so the exact same addition we are going to do for charges so charges have this property of adding like the numbers so charges also can be added like this if a system contains two charges q1 and q2 then the total charge on the system is q1 plus q2 so if the system has n number of charges we just have to add all of them so we have just have to take care of the proper signs of the charges while adding the charges that's all so this is the basic property additivity of charges what is the next property charge is conserved so okay when we talked about charging an object we talked about how objects uh, when objects are rubbed against each other the charges get transferred from one object to another place the charges are not created they are transferred from one object to another object so if for example if an object loses 10 electrons the other object which is uh, rubbed against it gains the same 10 electrons so the uh, charges are not disappearing anywhere we you can't create or destroy anything so the charge is conserved so when an object is charged it means that there is a transfer of charge from one to another charge is just redistributed between the objects so it's not you're not creating the charge you're just redistributing the charges between the objects so charge is always conserved in an isolated system so total charge in an isolated system is a constant so for example if i have a system that has only two objects and both of them have let's say some positive charge both of them and if i don't disturb the system it's an isolated system the charges within the system have to be constant all the time so i said there are two objects in the system if one object loses some charge the other object has to gain the same amount of charge so within a closed or isolated system the overall charges have to be conserved always so this is the property called conservation of charges so the next property and the last property which we are going to see is the quantization of charge so what do we mean by quantization see for example imagine that 1 rupee is the basic unit of uh, currency so if 1 rupee is the basic unit of currency you can't buy something for 3.5 rupees right so 
the basic unit Uh, the mul integral multiple of basic unit only you can buy so for example if 1 rupee is the basic unit you can buy something for 10 rupees or 11 rupees you can't buy something for 10.5 rupees so similarly the basic unit of electricity or electric charges here is e e is the charge of an electron or a proton so any charged object in the world you take that has to be integral multiple of this e so q has to be n multiplied by e because if e is the basic unit of charge you cannot have like 0.5 of electron somewhere right you can either have one electron you, you can either have one proton you can't have like 0.5 electron so it means that you cannot have n as a uh, point uh, decimal number you also always have to have n as an integ integer number so this is called quantization of charge all the free charges are integral multiples of basic unit of charge e so q equal to n into e e is the charge of an electron or a proton the basic unit of charge is coulomb c the value of e is determined to be this much so look at the basic unit of a charge it is coulomb but in order to make one coulomb you need nearly 10 power 19 number of electrons because the charge of one electron is so small it is 1.602192 multiplied by 10 power minus 19 coulomb so in order to create one coulomb of charge you need nearly 10 power 19 electron why waste time in commute and spend lot of money for iit je coaching Parents, do you want your kids to achieve top scores in IIT JEE? India's leading online NEET coaching 100% success IIT JEE. At T Einstein, we focus on IIT JEE coaching from class 6 to class 12. We think you'll like it. Our teachers are mostly PhDs in physics, maths, chemistry, botany, and zoology, with lots of years of teaching experience for class six to class twelve. Thousands of videos, quiz, MCQs. We provide a daily worksheet of 30 questions on each topic: math, physics, chemistry, and biology, for rigorous practice, concept understanding, evaluation, quiz, and thousands of videos. Limited offer forty thousand rupees per year. Book your class. T Einstein dot com.